I'm not a big Lion King movie. A fan of the first Lion King movie. Installment of the original Lion King, to be honest with you. As a kid, I wasn't the biggest fan. I mean, I liked it, but I, knew, I was a little overhyped. Maybe this is because I haven't forgiven Matthew Broderick for Inspector Gadget like other people have on moved it, like other people clearly moved on from. What does that have to do with the Lion King? Well, he plays Mufasa's son as an adult, remember? Uh, Matthew Broderick plays Simba as adult Simba in this movie, you know? I, 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 um... I think his performance in the Spicy Gatcher was better than, than, than this. And he sucked as Inspector Gadget and he sucks in this. This is my review on The Lion King. I giving this before I go any further. I'm giving this a uh, five out of ten. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, please, and click this the subscribe and hit the bell as I the subscribe button. And then hit the all button as I hit the bell button. This is how I just found out. So, The Lion King is, is, um, pretty, and they shun line stupid writing. I mean, I don't understand this. There's some stuff I don't understand. How come the kid... How come the kid, um... Simba, who he fall, The girl that he falls in love with as an adult. How come they doesn't foreshadow the events other than just tell you... That they're going to be a couple in the future? But how come it doesn't show you that they eventually will... I don't know. We never see that relationship. We just like the. I guess was telling us the audience is that beauty is bone deep. Because they fall in love like the the Swan Princess couple do in the first the Swan Princess movie. They fall in love as adults through their own l looks and realize they're hot for each other, even though they've clearly just been friends and thought, never thought, never gave it the slightest thought before. When they reunite as adults after not seeing them himself as uh, on screen just uh, together for a while as kids since kids so they see these you know usually these feelings are neutral here I don't know I'm not dating anybody I haven't been in a relationship really sure before or in bed before with anybody so I just hear that these things are neutral but they're not really uh, serious. So I wonder, is Simba sure he's in love? Or is he just horny because he needs to get laid and finds the, the, the closest pussy to bang? Because if that's so, then, you know, maybe, you know, 
I don't know. Maybe you maybe take us easy and slow it down. But I guess we're not supposed to think that much about that. Also, I didn't understand how at the end of the movie, why Simba's family suddenly is okay with slain Simba dying and getting, is the thought of Scar murdering Simba's his own biological mother and the love of his life and all of his uh, people he came to save wants him now dead as good as his dead. And though King was scar murdering him, even though he's caused this village nothing but pain and misery and agony. Yeah, Scar said that Simba t killed uh, conf uh, Simba, uh, like confronted Simba about him about him uh, killing uh, Mufasa, his father, his biological father. But Simba didn't know that was Scar that did it, so Simba still blames himself at this point in the story. And Scar knows that Simba blames himself, so... And so, for some reason, uh, he gets, this gets Simba off his guard, and uh, he feels guilty, and he feels bad enough. As of what 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 happened, and so the village, the line line village, the people of the, uh, the, the the people in the jungle, uh, the uh, uh in the hill. Of the lions are uh, okay with their king, future king now dying. That's because they blame him for killing the old future king. Because the new future king is a murderer, so they don't want him, so they want him de good as dead. Because the but they don't want but 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 yet now but now the old king was scar killing out of nowhere killing the future king. So that Scar can remain the king of the throne and not overpower it, so, so that Mufasa, our son Simba, the rightful heir yeah, to the throne, won't be king if he's dead, and therefore the bloodline went basically blah blah blah. Then he's the last. Yep, he's only the, the last. Pretty much the last of the bloodline of, of what's left of the bloodline. So so they don't want. I'll pay for this point. They will, and they and and this, they still don't want um. Scar to rule because he's a terrible rule and he's mean and cruel, un and cruel and unfair. So that's why someone came back to to stop Scar. And put it into him, but it actually ends up being the hyenas who turn against Scar because Scar is a pussy. And, and, uh, tries to pin this on the hyenas is to blame for, for his doing. Stuff right there, you can just eat him alive off screen. But, uh, 
Yeah. You see it. You see, like you see the the start of it, of his shadows getting eaten by the hyenas, and then you see the hyenas piling on top of him, and then uh, uh, kind of getting uh, around, getting around him, and eating, and then cutting away the shadows, cuts away, away from the shadow, the cut of the shadow of the hyenas devouring Scar's flesh. Thanks, Disney, for this treat in this kids' movie. The scene. <laughs> it was funny. I do like that. Uh, that was the funniest part of the movie. The hiatus eating scar. It would be funny if they ate Simba. Oh, but I thought the second funniest. Oh, I gotta admit, the funniest thing was the hyenas. Eat the, the hyena cow just because it was so fucking sick and twisted and, <laughs> and funny. Because that can you got the, you got the cannibals. The hyenas are. In this movie, y'all. Oh. Ah. Uh, yeah. And I gotta mention props to the animation for making a very convincing dead looking corpse on screen of a, of a dead animal. Of a lion when Mufasa died, and you saw the Mufasa dead body. As he got stampede over a stampede during a stampede, because God decided to actually decide to um, push him off a cliff. Basically, leading to his doom. The circle of life. It's a beautiful thing, is it not? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, this is this is, isn't it kind of funny how like uh, how like isn't it kind of funny how like the whole people animal is dying is okay unless it's the lion of the kingdom. Because the whole thing was dying is not necessarily a bad thing, but a pretty thing. <laughs> then Samba's into a rude awakening. <laughs> he sees his dad died. Well, why am I don't understand this? Why did Simpha thought that he murdered his dad when he was on the other side of the of the cliff? He was just from a watching standpoint of view. He wasn't anywhere near the the his. Uh, he wasn't. He was on a different side of the a different end, angle of the mountain. That that uh, that uh, that that that, that Simpha was on top of versus where Sky was on top of where he killed Mephasta and led him to his doom during the CMP. It doesn't make sense to me. But this leads Simver into thinking that he killed the king. Is dead, so 
he runs away from home and then falls in love with this girl and then comes back home. As of spending the night with the girl. And yes, he did feel that love tonight. I'm sure he did. Yes, he decided to leave Mexico in the morning. And leave the girl behind. And he didn't bring back up to take Scar. Probably stupid. Maybe I'm looking into it too much, that part. I'm wanting to bring back it's so stupid. But I don't know what's. What else is stupid about this movie? Oh, and this is a writing about the circle of life that makes them like Sean writing foot to shame. What did I say? No, oh, right, The Lion King. So this is part of The Lion King where they talk about the circle of life, the whole philosophy about the circle of life. And, I don't know, it sounds really stupid. How he, how his father puts it to Simba. It sounds like something that, and they show on what right. And put into one of his most hated movies. And write it into that one of his more hated movies. But to me, they're all pretty much bad for, for him. And I have to listen to the philosophy of the circle of life by some of us. I realize, wow, that's really dumb. How to look at it, life as fair. That's why I give him a five the first Lion King movie. I mean, the first Lion King movie. A five out of ten. Now I'm going to review Matthew Broderick's Inspector Gadget. I think this is a better movie than The Lion King. The first Inspector Gadget movie was Magic Project. But I'm not a fan of it, though. More of a fan than I am of The Lion King, though. So, Matthew Broderick. Plays Inspector Gadget. Now, Armin, I haven't seen a whole... 
uh, compl- all the episodes of the Infinity Gadget original show. But I've seen like a good handful of them. At least like five episodes maybe. In my life and I enjoyed it. Uh, so. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I'm, I'm not the most ex. I know the most. I'm a little I'm not expert. On gadget as I could be. But I'm not sure how. I. I don't think. I'm not sure how faithful this. I feel this is being faithful to the show. I don't feel this is being faithful to the show from what I've seen of the five. Only, and I've seen only like five random episodes of the show. On a VHS that I owned back in, in my back in my childhood days, uh, and I still have it. I think I in the somewhere. Um. That's so. Uh, that's how I. Was seeing about knowing about the show, and um, I have to say I'm not a big fan of what Matthew Brothers bring to the table in this movie. In the movie, Inspector Gadget. I think the biggest problem, he plays the role very stoic instead of like Inspector Gadget, instead of like a, instead of, and he's, and he's, instead of like playing, I just feel, I just, instead of like, he just doesn't seem like he's having any fun in the role. He's really, he really feel like he's not trying, actually. But he tries hard in this, and he did in the Lion King. I'll give him that. I think. I'm guessing. Oh, and this is the origin story of Inspector Gadget, but it's also a reimagining of Inspector Gadget, while also being a remake of the show, based off the sh- show. This is another Disney movie that he doesn't put out. Thanks, Disney. And, um, I don't really despise this movie. Like I should, I think. Like other people do. But I definitely don't love this movie. It's not one of my favorites, but I, it's, to me, it's not a terrible movie. Because it did got a few laughs out of me. At times. Yeah, actually, there was this one time. It got a laugh out of me, okay? But it was it, that laugh. That, that laugh that made me chuckle is the gal when Inspector Gadget is trying to control his gadget abilities that's getting injured, and he, he gets worked on. And his origins like get played out, and he goes through training to learn how to use his new gadget. 
it's gadgets. I didn't expect the gadget. And I see he stretches his arm, <laughs> and he's supposed to get these. Uh, he's he's supposed to select between two goals. Uh, and and goals get the ball on the right or the ball on the. Uh, he's, he's supposed to grab two balls, one on the right and left. And bring them back. <laughs> and this crazy guy with a funny accent is telling him to visualize his goal by grabbing the balls right in front of him, blindfolded. This leads to the funniest gag in Disney history. In live action. <laughs> Inspector Gadget grabs the wrong pair of balls. Instead of grabbing the balls he, uh, he was supposed to grab, he grabs the man's balls. He grabs a uh, human balls. <laughs> he grabs the wrong balls.